This is Josh White with JW Math Tutoring. Today's video is going to go over some common digital SAT math problem types where I do not recommend uh, using Desmos to solve. So let's go ahead and take a look. But life is a dream the calculus could never predict. Welcome back to my ultimate Desmos guide to digital SAT math. This video is going to cover some common problem types where I recommend uh, not using Desmos due to the time and complexity involved. So the first type is when you have a problem that's asking you to find the value of a constant and um, it's being uh, asked to meet some type of given condition. Uh, and uh, in addition to that, the problem is free response, not multiple choice. And another um, kind of clue or another kind of uh, hint when you have, might have this issue is when the constant is not an integer. So some examples of these types of problems might be where you're given a system of equations and a lot of these, uh, they typically involve fractions. You know, it might be like whatever, two thirds x plus, 3 halves y equals 5 thirds. And then there's another equation, you know, which is like 1 seventh x plus 2py equals negative 14 thirds. And it would say, like, what is the value of p uh, such that the system of equations has no solution or such that the system of equations has infinite solutions? And uh, the problem is this can take forever in Desmos because... And some of these, uh, like the p-value here that you're solving for, does not need to be an integer. So it could be a fraction. So you don't, uh, you first of all, you might have to spend time, you know, if you're using a slider to graph both the lines and like match them up so they either look horizontal or they overlap completely. And you might have to keep zooming in if it's a decimal and like setting the 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 starting and end point for the slider, you know, smaller and smaller and smaller and decreasing your step size. You can end up wasting a lot of time doing that. I typically advise students for a problem like this just to instead, you know, do it by hand and match up basically the slopes and set the slopes equal. Um, <clears throat> and the other problem is uh, related to this, if it's no solution, you know, it's really difficult to tell visually when two lines are, say, completely parallel uh, versus not parallel, but have slopes that are very, very, very similar, you know, to each other. And so what I mean by that is if you had one line that you were graphing out and the slope of it was, you know, 1.5 and you had another line that you were graphing out and the slope of it was 1.5. 501. If you graphed both those in Desmos, you know, they would look like they are parallel just upon visual inspection, even though technically we know they are not. They will intersect because the slopes are different. Um, it's just that the intersection point, you know, might be way off the screen and you have to zoom in, or it's not zoom in, but zoom out uh, repeatedly to try to find where they actually intersect. So for these types of problems, and again, especially where the constant um, is not an integer. That's not the clue. If the constant's an integer, then you know that you are restricted, you know, only to integer values. So you don't have to worry about decimals. But when it's not an integer, that just greatly, you know, increases the number of possible answers. So for problems like this, I generally do not uh, recommend using Desmos to solve it. You can absolutely use Desmos to check your answer, you know, after you solved it by hand. Um, and confirm that the two lines are in fact, you know, infinite solutions are overlapping or they're parallel or whatever. Um, but for the actual solving of it, I do not recommend uh, using Desmos. The second type is solving equations that have a constant in them and specifically when it's a free response question. So some, there was an example of a problem that came up uh, a couple months ago I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. I think it was something like this. I mean, people, different people had different numbers, but this was the basic idea, right? And it wanted to know what the value of k was if this had, if this equation had one solution. So the problem is again, it, you're not told that it's an integer, and it turned out it was not actually an integer. It was a decimal, and so 
if you actually tried, you know, to to graph it out and use Desmos and find, you know, where the two thing, two sides intersect only one time, just was very time consuming because you had to like, you know, narrow it down and keep uh, decreasing again the kind of like the range for your slider and the step size until you eventually found the correct answer. So questions like this again, I generally don't recommend that you try to solve entirely with Desmos. Um, only recommend it as more of like a check uh, afterwards. The third type of problem um, are when you have sum and product of solutions problems, you know, typically for quadratics, um, but not, it could be higher powers as well, uh, involving constants. And that's primarily because I have not found, you know, an easy way to do the entire problem itself in Desmos. So this is a type of problem where it's, you've seen examples where it's say like three sevens, and um, maybe it's like, I don't know, it's like 2x minus 3. Example, it's like x minus, oh, I forget what this was. It was like 2k plus 1, and then I'm trying to remember the exact problem. x plus, what about 2k plus 1? This whole equation equal equals 0, and it's like the sum of the roots or the sum of the solutions is equal to something what is the value of k or the product of the roots below is equal to something you know what's the value of k and so uh you once you set up the general equation which is taking all the roots and either adding them or multiplying them and setting it equal to whatever you're told like yes you can use you can then use desmos to solve that equation and get the answer but the point is there hasn't been any way, at least that I've been able to figure out, to just take, you know, this equation that you're given and basically do the entire problem in, you know, one step, not necessarily one step, but even if it's multiple steps, entirely in Desmos without writing or setting or solving, you know, anything um, by hand. So this is a third problem type where I would not recommend using Desmos on. Again, you can use it for the latter half once you set up the equation, but the actual like constructing of the equation with the product or some of the roots um, needs to, uh, as far as I know, be done by hand. So, uh, like I said, these were just three kind of, uh, you know, common uh, digital SAT math type problems that uh, I recommend not using Desmos for just because they can be too time consuming in terms of uh, trying to use a slider and trying to narrow down exactly where the slider value needs to be, especially when the constant that you're solving for is not an integer value. So it could be any, you know, any number. Um, do check out, if you haven't done so already, uh, the common problem types for I absolutely do uh, recommend you should use Desmos for. It should be the video before this in the playlist. And if you've made it here without checking out, you know, the entire ultimate Desmos guide to digital SAT math, um, check out those as well. You know, core skills, there are intermediate skills, there's a video on advanced skills. And so there's lots of, uh, you know, helpful and useful information out there um, in order to learn how to use Desmos to solve problems on uh, the digital SAT math modules. Um, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, like I said, if I come across other common uh, problem types, uh, that maybe are new, you know, come up on these new exams in 2025, you know, I'll add on to this video, make additional videos as part of the playlist as well.